Could this be the answer to sustainable transport? Hydrogen fuel cell is a zero emission power generator. It takes in fuel in the form of hydrogen gas and converts it into electricity through the power generating cell with only water as the byproduct. So the difference with lithium batteries is for the same weight. It contains about three times more energy and refueling the hydrogen tank takes just five minutes compared to several hours for battery charging. Spectronic was founded in 2011 in Singapore. It develops hydrogen fuel cells that can power drones, robotics, and electric vehicles. Unlike batteries that store energy, hydrogen fuel cells generate energy. Well, for us, it's uh, the quest to a uh, net zero carbon future. So a uh, fuel cell will not be the silver bullet, right? Uh, same like uh, lithium batteries cannot be the one size fit all solution. So as long as it contributes to a net zero carbon, uh, we feel we should put this uh, innovative technology and innovative solution in the right application. We are trying to reduce the technical complexity as well as the high cost barrier to fuel cell adoption. So to solve complexity, we design a fully integrated plug and play system available in different power range for various vehicle sizes. The hydrogen used in the fuel cells is a mix of gray and blue as they were extracted using natural gas. Gray hydrogen releases greenhouse gas emissions, while blue hydrogen is cleaner because its carbon is captured. Not all hydrogen is the same. Most of what is provided today remains gray hydrogen. How does the world go about in coming up with a large scale and cost-effective solution. The way hydrogen is produced, as you mentioned, it is based on fossil fuel. We, we crack uh, methane through a steam methane reformer and we produce a lot of CO2. Our goal is to produce renewable hydrogen and to do that is going to be through electrolysis. So we'll take renewable power, you put that in water and then you, you crack the molecule of hydrogen and oxygen and you have a, a, a green, a fully green uh, hydrogen molecule. In between, uh, we have what we call blue hydrogen, where you capture the CO2. The majority of hydrogen stations worldwide charge around 15 to 20 US dollars per kilogram of gray hydrogen. Green hydrogen costs more, but that's what is needed to achieve net zero emissions. Looking to the future, Spectronic believes that tomorrow's urban transport demands will diverge between batteries for passenger cars and fuel cells for fleet vehicles. It comes down to some key differences between fuel cells and batteries. Fuel cells have about three times more runtime compared to batteries, and fuel cells can also be refueled faster. For fleet vehicles, uh, typically they go back to a centralized depot. So you can set up uh, one hydrogen station and it will serve a critical mass of vehicles. So this solved the problem of a lack of a nationwide hydrogen infrastructure. The second reason is fleet vehicles typically are, uh, are highly utilized. They have to travel long distance in a day and they cannot afford to stop many hours for battery charging compared for a private car. A battery vehicle is good enough because you can charge it when you're working or when you're sleeping at night. While well, fleet vehicles make up a small portion of the entire vehicle population, they emit a disproportionately large amount of carbon emissions. I think hydrogen is a Swiss knife. We can use it for many things, but not for everything. Uh, if you take the mobility for small vehicles, go electric. Uh, if you want a big heavy duty truck, go hydrogen. So I think we'll have to learn a little bit what is best for what, what are the best production costs for all these uh, molecules. Other challenges remain for a broader adoption of hydrogen. It's highly flammable and difficult to store and transport. Air Liquide is working to reduce these hurdles. But when you electrify the world with renewable power, you need to store energy and you need to manage carbon. And that's where hydrogen is exactly at the intersection of electrification and management of the energy mix. 
if you look at the discussion for the last two, three years, it's all about energy and how you are going to move away from a fossil fuel and transport molecules or energy from one continent to the other. So we'll have to trust that the technology is going to progress and we pull a lot of effort into R&D, into development to make sure that we produce better at better cost with a better efficiency. By 2030, at one point, hydrogen will become way more competitive than it is today. Uh, because of technology, because of cost of renewable, because of uh, reduction in uh, capital and the likes. At the same time, technology needs to evolve. Uh, and that's probably why some of the shipping industry is waiting. Uh, is LNG the solution? Is ammonia the solution? Is methanol the solution? Is hydrogen the solution? Uh, there are still many routes open and uh, we need to try, we need to learn and we need to see the one that best uh, answer to a specific need. According to the Hydrogen Council, by 2050, 20% of the world's energy mix could be hydrogen or hydrogen related. In the next part of this series, the green energy boat crisscrossing the world on zero emissions and how the technology behind it could help propel the world to net zero.